Hi, um, welcome back to my channel. We are going to 100% ignore the fact that I've been gone for several months. Um, honestly, life has just been very chaotic and very busy, and um, I'm back. That's all that really matters, and I'm sure a lot of you don't care, so that's totally fine. Anyways, I'm back, and today I have a very easy um, kind of video that I wish I had when I was getting into the field of veterinary medicine. This is going to be the top things I wish I knew before get in, getting into veterinary medicine or be, before becoming a veterinary technician. Um, so if this is something you're interested in, stay tuned. Um, so a couple things. Um, I have the viewfinder is right up here, so if I'm looking slightly above you guys or past you guys, that's probably why. And then I have the notes, my bullet points on my phone, so if I'm looking down, that's what I'm looking at. Alright, so let's just get started into the things that I wish I knew before I got into the field. So the very first thing on my list I have is that every hospital slash clinic is different. So what I mean by this is their uh, procedures and protocols and how they run things in general are going to be different from place to place. Obviously, every hospital is different. Like not just the staffing, the company name or whatever, but basically how things are ran. Um, there are some hospitals or clinics where you have very minimal client interaction and then there are places where it's all client interaction, um, not just general practice or emergency stuff. So um, some of the things that may differ are like how they clean, how deep they clean, um, which you would think they all are same, same across the board, not true. Every clinic I've been to, has different protocols when it comes to disinfecting and cleaning stuff, um, especially when it comes to surgery packs. Surgery packs are just packs that hold sterilized instruments for any surger surgical procedures um, that need to be, you know, sterile and clean. So um, I've seen that, like, you know, in vet tech school or like if you are assistant school, I'm sure they make they teach you guys how to do packs and how to like properly put them in the pack, how to properly fold and stuff. And that's all relatively the same, um, but some doctors actually want extra instruments or don't want as many instruments in that pack. And you kind of have to learn that every doctor does things differently and wants, like prefers things done a certain way. So just kind of keep that in mind. Don't go from one practice into another one thinking that it's gonna be the exact same like protocol or whatever. Things can be completely different and it's just something that I didn't expect when I first got into the field, so that's why I put that there. Um, Alright, let's move on to the second thing. Second thing I wrote down is the amount of cleaning that is required on this job. Oh my god, you guys. When I say cleaning, I mean cleaning. Like, I know your title is like assistant, kennel assistant, vet tech, whatever it may be. You are not exempt from cleaning. Like, the amount of time you spend cleaning on the job is ridiculous. Like, so much hair, blood, urine, poop, like, laundry, sweeping, mopping, you're gonna be doing everything. You're kinda like a janitor. <laughs> like, not to discourage you guys, like, if you don't like cleaning, but cleaning is part of the job. Everyone does it, and because you're working with animals, like, it's just more of a mess and more of a sanitation issue, so literally after every patient you're gonna have to clean up after, after yourself because think you'll make a mess every hospital has makes messes and you're just gonna have to clean it's just a part of the job sorry not sorry so that's just something i wish i knew like the amount of cleaning that is expected of you um along the same lines of cleaning and disinfecting i have smells and bodily fluids so um obviously you're working with animals and animals have an odor um, this is part of the job. I'm sure that when you enter a veterinary hospital or veterinary clinic or even like rescues and shelters, you have that like animal smell. Um, you will become desensitized to it. So when I'm talking about smells, it's most like the smell of diarrhea, smell of urine, smell of anal glands, smell of animals that have sort of been neglected and not taken care of or not groomed properly. It, just the smells can sometimes be overpowering and like I said you do become more desensitized to it but you, some of the smells are just like really bad even surgery smells like when they open up like the intestines or something disgusting I hate it enemas oh my god <laughs> if you don't know what an enema is um yeah you you'll know it when you yeah just know um I also put bodily fluids because literally the amount of bodily fluids you'll get on you is also ridiculous from anything from blood 
to like urine, feces, like anal glands. Anal glands are the worst, the worst kind of bodily fluids that you could ever get on you. Um, sometimes even little like skin pieces, like it's just, honestly, this is why you wear scrubs because everything is disgusting and yeah, just be prepared for the amount of smells and bodily fluids and bodily parts that will get on you. It's just part of the field. Um, so if you're squeamish, maybe reconsider this field. Um, all right, the next thing I have down is angry patients. And I, yes, angry patients. So obviously these animals don't know where they're at. They don't know that we're here to help you. So they are going to be anxious. Um, they're going to be fearful. And sometimes they're gonna be aggressive. So the amount of aggressive dogs, fractious cats, um, flighty animals is so high. Like, they're more common than the well-behaved pets. So every time you see a well-behaved pet, like, you're just going to thank them for being such a good patient. Because the majority of them are not. So be prepared that not every puppy or kitten or whatever animal you may be working with is not going to want to snuggle with you. It's probably going to hate you. So just be prepared for that. Um, along the same line is angry clients and customers. So angry, frustrated, like anxious all along that line. You're going to have to deal with that a lot because, you know, this is a very emotionally charged field. People are at the hospital for a reason, especially if it's not just like vaccinations or annual stuff. If their pet is sick, dying, etc., they're going to be upset and you're going to have to learn to deal with people that are upset or angry at you. Try not to take things personally um, and just try to remember that this is their baby that you're working with and that's probably why they're so upset and angry. Um, but it is something that you're going to have to learn how to navigate and try not to take personally. So, yeah, that's something I didn't really, I wasn't really prepared for. Um, and then, um, again, still talking about clients, the next thing I have is the amount of client education and client contact that you will do at this job. People think that in this field, you're, you come in and you're like, I don't want to work with people. I want to work with the animals. That's why I'm here. I don't want to deal with people. Um, no, like half the job is actually talking to their owners and client education, especially in general practice. You're going to talk to them about vaccinations, you're going to talk to them about flea medication, about preventative stuff like dental, spays, neuters, um, talk, discharging, like patients, like you're going to have to talk to them about aftercare, go over, med like I said, go over medication. It's just a lot of client interaction and you need to be prepared that it's not all blood work and catheters and x-rays and just working with animals strictly no um some places like the zoo shelters or even some hospitals i know you get very minimal contact and that's great i love that for you guys but for the vast majority you're going to be talking to people it's just part of the job so you can't really ever avoid people um like i said unless you're working at the zoo or like a shelter or rescue even then though um, okay, the next bullet point I have is how physical demanding the job can be. Um, yeah, this job is not a normal 9 to 5 office job where you get a little desk and get to sit down and be on the computer. Um, no, the majority of it is you are standing, you are running around, you are lifting heavy animals and you're wrestling with them because you need to restrain them to do like certain things like getting blood, taking x-rays if they're not sedated stuff like that so the amount of lifting um heavy lifting to get dog patients on tables if they're not small it's just a very physical job so much lifting so your knees are gonna hurt your arms are gonna hurt your back is gonna hurt um your whole body is literally gonna hurt some days and you're just gonna you know it's just <laughs> pain medication is your friend massages are gonna be your best friend and lifesavers so not that i'm advocating taking medication that's not for you but like sometimes you just need pain medication so this is a very like I said very physically demanding job and you have to do it it's just kind of how it is so that's something I wish I knew going in um, because my first week honestly was just very tiring I was like dead I was deceased that's how tired I was and then the last thing I really want to talk about is how emotionally charged and how emotional taxing this field can be um, so in this field, um, if you guys are trying to get into it, I know that you guys hear that, like, there's a lot of burnout, and that is so true. The normal assistants and techs usually burn out after three to five years of working in this field, not because it's physically demanding or the pay, although those do, 
you know, contribute to that. The main reason is that it is so emotionally draining and emotionally taxing. Um, it's just the amount of clients that beat you down or sometimes like they can't like seeing pets, like turning away pets or seeing pets pass because the client can't afford care. Um, seeing a lot of euthanasias, uh, dealing with harassment because harassment does happen in the workplace. Uh, mostly from clients and if you're really unlucky sometimes you don't have the best managers or you're unfortunately like in a toxic um, clinic or hospital and I can make a whole video uh, talking about toxic work environment and how prevalent it is in this field but that's like I said a separate topic let me know if you actually want to hear that or whatever um, but yeah it's just emotionally exhausting because you pour your heart and so when you are there to try to help these patients but sometimes they just don't make it and sometimes you get a lot of euthanasias in a row or unjust euthanasias or seeing getting like seeing patients walk out the door without helping it sucks it is horrible um and like i said and if you're unlucky and you don't have a support system um within the hospital or clinic then things will just kind of spiral and go from there which i get really sucks but um yeah so just the reason yeah there is a lot of burnout in the field and it's because it is so emotionally packed um uh, and the amount of tears you will shed at work uh, monumental you sometimes you're just gonna want to cry some other days you're just gonna be so pissed off like it just is gonna happen so yeah those are the things i wish i knew before i got into the veterinary field um do i regret it absolutely not um but it is just some things to kind of keep in the back of your mind and if it changed your mind then i wish you luck on your other vet ventures if you're like me and it's not that serious it's not that deep then continue on and um yeah there's a lot of good things about the field as well but um yeah, I guess that's pretty much it for this video. Um, let me know if you guys have any video suggestions or topics that you want me to cover. Any questions or concerns. I have a few videos up um, on this channel um, regarding veterinary medicine and stuff. So yeah, if you have any other questions, like I said, let me know and I'll be happy to do a video about it. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Please feel free to subscribe if you want to see more content from me. Um, I'm going to try to be more consistent. I know I keep saying that in every video and in every video I'm not consistent, but I'm trying. I'm trying my best. Yeah. All right, so subscribe. Let me know if you have any video suggestions and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Okay, bye.